Good morning, everyone. This is Pastor Troy. Welcome to Living Faith Community Church. This is going to be a Father's Day broadcast, and I hope that it's a blessing to you today as you gather with families and remember your Father. This morning, I wanted to talk with you about the Heavenly Father that's recorded in the Bible that Jesus would often communicate to people while he was here on earth to let people know there is a loving, gracious, intimate Heavenly Father who wants to be involved in your life and guide and shepherd your life. Let's pray together as we begin. Heavenly Father, we're grateful for this beautiful summer day and Father, we're so thankful that you are involved in our lives and that you sent your Son, Jesus Christ, to this world to let us know that you love us dearly and you forgive our sin and you promise us eternal life if we will believe in your Son and what he's done for us. Heavenly Father, we're grateful that we can look to you as our Father, as our perfect Father, who cares about us, who is wise, who can guide our life and give us strength. This is the kind of Father that all of us need, and we're grateful that you are like that for us. And we pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. This morning, as we celebrate Father's Day, I think of my own father, my earthly father. I had the good fortune of having a good father. My dad, Pastor John Billow, was a pastor. I grew up in a pastor's home, a, a Christian home. And even though my dad was very busy with ministry and with uh, supplying for the family and, and doing all that's necessary for a home and a family of four kids, I could see now, looking back, that he really took time for me to spend time with his sons. And he would often take us fishing or take us hunting. He would play with us in the backyard. Sometimes we would have snowball fights. I remember he helped me find my first bicycle and put it together. And um, I remember at one point in his life, he actually bought a motorcycle and took me for a ride. And I know that at those times when we were young and he was very busy in ministry and raising a family, I could tell he took time to let me know that he cared about me and that he loved me. And looking back now, that meant a lot to me. But I know that not every one of us had a father who was present, had a father who really cared and was there. Some of us grew up without fathers in our homes and in our families, and that's left kind of a vacant spot in our hearts. I know that some of us had fathers who were there, but they were kind of distant, you know, distracted, not really engaged, and we didn't really feel that kind of nurture or care from a father. And I know some of us had fathers who were even abusive and were scary and caused us a lot of deep pain and hurt. And I know that nowadays people grow up with an image of their father that may not be that healthy or well-rounded or, or good. But my message today is I want to communicate to you that there's a heavenly father that Jesus Christ wants us to know about, a heavenly father that really loves you cares about you and wants to be involved in your life. And this is one of the great truths that Jesus Christ communicated to us. Because Jesus knew that he had a good father and he wanted you to know that you can have his father as your own as well. I thought of a couple passages from the Gospel, especially the Gospel of Matthew, where the Heavenly Father in Heaven has an interaction with his son and actually speaks to him in front of other people. And it's very revealing to their relationship. It's very revealing how God the Father is. So that I want you to know what I'm speaking from the Word of God is true for you, true for all of us. There was one occasion recorded here in the Matthew, in the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 3, verses 13 through 17. This is when Jesus was baptized in the Jordan River by John the Baptist. And God the Father spoke at that moment, and everyone around heard. And it's really quite revealing about how our Heavenly Father loves us, how the Heavenly Father loved His Son, Jesus Christ. In the Gospel story, it says it this way, Then Jesus came from Galilee to the Jordan River to be baptized by John the Baptist. But John tried to deter him, saying, I need to be baptized by you, but you come to me? And Jesus replied, let it be done so now this way. It is proper for us to do this to fulfill all righteousness. Then John consented. <clears throat> as soon as Jesus was baptized, he went up out of the water. At that moment, heaven was opened, and John saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and landing on Jesus. 
And a voice from heaven said, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. There's God the Father speaking out loud in front of everyone on the moment Jesus was baptized, letting him know and letting them know that this is my beloved Son. This is someone I love and cherish, and with him I am well pleased. And in this reference, I want us to know that God the Father feels the same way about us, those he created in his image. And that's why Jesus came to restore that relationship. There was another occasion in <clears throat> Matthew 17 where Jesus was transfigured on top of a mountain. In other words, Jesus was in the flesh, looked like a normal Jewish man. He was with Peter, James, and John. They had gone to the top of a mountain to pray together, spend time together. And um, at that time, Jesus was transfigured. In other words, he became his, his supernatural self, his glorified self. <clears throat> and he actually met with Moses and Elijah, who came from heaven to talk to him about something. And the disciples, Peter, James, and John, witnessed this event. And what's significant about this event is at the same time, God spoke from heaven on this occasion as well. So in Matthew chapter 17, it says this, after six days, Jesus took with him Peter, James, and John, the brothers of James, and led them up a high mountain by themselves. There he was transfigured before them. His face shone like the sun, and his clothes became as white as light. Just then he appeared before them, along with Elijah and Moses, and they were talking with Jesus. Peter said to Jesus, Lord, it is good for us to be here. If you wish, I will put up three shelters, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. While he was still speaking, a bright light, a bright cloud covered them, and a voice from the cloud, a voice from heaven said, This is my son, who I am well pleased. Listen to him. And so here on another occasion in the life and ministry of Jesus Christ, he was at the top of a mountain and became in a supernatural form to talk with Moses and Elijah. That in itself lets us know that Jesus has intimate relationships with people long after they're gone. And Jesus wants to have an intimate relationship with you forever and ever. But on this occasion, his father speaks again and they heard his voice. And Peter talks about that later to the disciples. And they heard the Father, Jesus' Father, say that he loved him and that he is well pleased with him and that these disciples should really pause and listen to Jesus Christ, listen to what he says, to his leadership, to his discipline, to his teaching. And so on these two occasions, I wanted to point out to us this morning on Father's Day that there is a Heavenly Father. He's up in heaven. He's holy and perfect and wrapped in light and lives in eternity, but he's a God who speaks love and well-being to his son and wants to speak love and well-being to you, his son or daughter, if you'll believe in Jesus Christ. Jesus wants you to know this. It's one of the main reasons he came to this earth to give his life on the cross, to rise from the dead, and to speak about his Father and speak about his kingdom, the kingdom that's coming eternally, where Christ will rule with us forever and ever. There's a story, a particular story in the Gospel of Luke chapter 15, where Jesus is telling multiple stories to the crowd and to the people to let them know that God loves you. And I'm here to let you know that. And if you're feeling lost, if you're feeling broken, if you're feeling like you don't care or no one cares for you, I want you to know that Jesus is letting them know that God cares for you that God loves you and knows your name. At this one place here in the Gospel of Luke chapter 15, it says at the top of the story, now there were tax collectors and sinners were all gathered around to hear Jesus. But the Pharisees, the religious people, and the teachers of the law were muttering among themselves, this man welcomes sinners and eats with them. I wanted to start the story there because this is the context where Jesus is with a crowd of people, both the religious and the unreligious, <clears throat> those who were sinners, those who were looked down on, those who had broken lives, broken families. But Jesus was spending time with them, eating with them, talking with them, befriending them. And the 
Pharisees, the religious people, were like, you know, do you really want to spend time with them? We're surprised that you're sitting down and eating with them. And Jesus is not liking a religious mindset. He's liking a relationship mindset. He wants to have a relationship with you, and he wants you to know that you can have a relationship with his heavenly Father. That's the purpose of his coming. <clears throat> so, Jesus goes on to tell them a couple stories about how God loves lost people, sinful people, broken people. And in this, uh, in this parable, he's telling a story about a lost son. And he tells a story about how there were two sons who lived with their wealthy father on a plantation. Uh, they had all that they needed. They had land. They had crops, cattle, servants. And one of the sons, the younger son, was rebellious, didn't want to be on the estate, didn't want to be responsible. He said, Dad, can I just have my inheritance? Can I just have the money you have laid aside for me? And I want to go my own way. And so his dad, in his wisdom and love, gave the son his, his money. And the son left the estate, traveled off to a foreign land, and of course, being rebellious and making an unwise move, blew his money on wild living. That's what the Bible says, on prostitutes, drinking, and wild living. Blew all of his money. At that time, little did he know, a famine was going to hit the land, and everyone was going to be scarce for food and water and what have you. And so at that time, he was out of money and decided to take a job feeding pigs. Now, for a Jewish young man to feed pigs, there couldn't have been a worse job than he chose. And um, it got so bad and he got so thin that he longed to eat what the pigs were eating. Well, one day it dawned on him, man, I've really blown it. I've blown my father's money. I've ruined my life. I'm, I'm feeding pigs. I've, I've embarrassed my parents. I brought shame to my name. I don't know what to do right now. But it says in the text that he came to his senses and realized that he could go back home and at least be a hired hand on his father's estate so he'd have some type of money in his pocket and some type of food to eat and a bed to sleep in. He thought at least his dad would accept him back to that extent. The uh, story picks up here and it's just a couple verses that we have time for this morning. So in the course of the story, Jesus says this when the son had decided to come back home. It says here that, but while he was still a long way off, the son returning home, the rebellious son, the broken son, the son who had lost everything. While he was still a long way off, his father saw him and was filled with compassion. His father saw him and was filled with compassion for him. And so he ran to his son threw his arms around his son, and kissed him. The son said to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and against you. Interesting that the son would say that. He not only knew that he shamed his father and family and hurt his father, his earthly father, but he recognized that he had hurt the feelings of his heavenly father. I had sinned against heaven and against you, Dad. It's interesting that he admitted that. And he says, I'm no longer worthy to be called your son. But the father said to him and said to the servants around him, Quick, bring his best robe and put it on him. Put a ring on his finger and sandals back on his feet. Bring the fatted calf and kill it. Let's celebrate and have a feast today. For this son of mine who was dead and lost is now back and alive. And he was lost, but now he's found. So they began to celebrate. The reason Jesus is telling the story is to let the religious people know who were in the crowd, who were murmuring and grumbling about this scenario, and let the sinners seated around with Jesus know that, you know what, there's a Heavenly Father, and if you've really blown it and been rebellious, you have brought shame to the family name, you can always come back, and I want you to know that my Heavenly Father can be like this for you, to these sinful people, these broken people, these rebellious people. He said, my Heavenly Father will wrap his arms around you, will love you, will kiss you, will put a robe back on your shoulders and a ring back on your finger and slaughter the fatted calf and have a feast and celebrate that you've come back to him. And I think this is probably the most beautiful story in the Gospels to let you know today on Father's Day 2020 that there's a Heavenly Father who loves you 
and who will welcome you back if you've been wandering away or you've been rebellious or you feel like you're too broken. You can always come back home to him. And I had the fortune of having a good dad who took time for me and loved me and sacrificed for me. But I know many of you didn't have a father like that. He wasn't around, he was too busy, or he was even abusive and caused you a lot of deep pain. I want you to know that the Heavenly Father is nothing like any of those options. The Heavenly Father is someone who cares, who loves you, and wants to provide you well-being and a healthy and a happy life. And so I pray that today you would understand that the Heavenly Father loves you and you can have him for your Heavenly Father. And you're saying, well, how can I be sure of this? How can I be sure that there's a Heavenly Father, that God up there loves me and knows my name? The famous verse, John 3:16, that my father, Pastor John, and I quote often, which is, for God so loved this world. God, the Heavenly Father, loved this world and everyone on it. For God so loved this world that he gave his only begotten Son. He proved that he loved this world. He proved that he loved you by sending something that was most precious to him, his only Son, to die on a cross, to pave the way for you to come back home. He proved it by the cross, his love for you. It's undeniable, the love of the cross through Jesus Christ. That's how you can know for sure. For God so loved this world that he gave his one and only son that whoever believes in him shall have eternal life. And I trust that you're trusting in Christ and his provision at the cross that you might have eternal life and a restored relationship with your heavenly father. He walks with you, he talks with you. I can tell you that he's real. I hope this was a blessing to you today. Let's pray together for a moment as we close. Heavenly Father, we're so grateful that we can have a restored relationship with you through Jesus Christ. We're so grateful that you provided that for us. For many of us, we've had broken families, broken fathers, broken hearts. But Lord, in this story, you wanted to let the sinners and the broken people know that they could have a Heavenly Father that really cares about them, genuinely loves them, and has a, a plan for their life and can put peace into their heart. We're grateful for this promise through the cross and through the resurrection that we can claim for our own. And that it's not just a promise, but it can be an experience. We can experience the relationship with the Father through Christ. And we're grateful for that today on Father's Day 2020. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, I hope this morning that the Word of God has been a comfort to you and an encouragement to you. And I would say to you, continue to walk in the counsel of God's word, and you will walk in his love, in his hope, and in his peace. Take care and have a great day.